Excellent. No problem. OK. <clears throat> now, for, now for your challenge, show me how you caught them. All right. We'll start off as I started in the match, really. That's my big pot. Mm -hmm. I actually put... Let me see if they're half a pot of bait in. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to go and overdo it at the start. I just wanted to make sure I had some gear there while I was fishing the feeder. So 11 metres. Got myself lined up with the feature on the other side. Straight in. And then I was straight out on the feeder. The piece of punch meat on there. Yeah. Nothing in the feeder, just ground bait. In the day, what I want, you know, if there's, if there's any fish out there, I just want them to come straight to that little feeder, and the only, the only bait there is my hook bait. So what happened next? What happened next was, straight away, I'm starting to loose feed, basically, on my top four line. And also down the edge. I'm only fishing top five down the edge. Yeah. So I didn't really, you know what I mean, I like to, because I'm only fishing for individual fish down the edge, I do like to throw it if I can. And on the perfect day, the tip would fire around in a, on a 10 pound Of course, perp. As, as, we, as we found out with, with Tommy Pickering yesterday, I mean, because there's a bait limit in place here, you need to, you need to do, you, you know, you've got to be careful how you're feeding it, haven't you? You've you got have, to feed yes, it steady because have, yeah. there's a real danger, of course, again, that you could just sort of run out after sort of three or four That's hours. That's right, and where, where, where I've got two mixes there of chopped worm yeah. and I've got me normal casters, you have to, you know, you have to make sure yeah. that you, you, you time it right, really. Yeah. Tommy had a great day fishing with the, the method feeder, a method they caught 160 odd pound on a couple of weeks back. Yeah. How come you've gone out on a cage feeder? Thing is, Dave, on the first festival, the first spring festival, is um, you're not allowed to fish the method feeder. Oh, I see. If I, you know, if if I was allowed, I would, I would certainly be on the method feeder without a doubt. Yeah. Unfortunately, on the first festival, you're not allowed. So that's obviously why I'm fishing a, a cage feeder right. with, with a 12-inch hook length as well. That that is the rules. Well, that didn't take long, mate. It's all right, Dave. That's that's how my match. Normally starts. <laughs> <laughs> One goes down from it. that point onwards. But this is what happened in the, in the actual day of the race, you know. This is I had a quick couple of chucks on the feeder, and um, it did go round with a few F1s. I think that's what this is actually—a small F1. And the thing is with this, it's like we said earlier. You know, if you'd have gone out and nailed a ten-pound carp straight away. Oh, straight away you're in. You, you know. know. Oh, suddenly at the end of the match. I mean, how many times do we look at result sheets and see how close the ending is? Yeah. Tench. Small tench. You look at the result sheet at the end, and like you know, two or three pounds separates the top three. Even yeah. when it's, even when it's hundred pounds, yeah, yeah. really close. It, every rest. fish counts, and you know, well, like I said, when I'm when I am fishing the feeder, I'm looking around as well. I'm looking around, you know, waiting for some of the go out on the pole, and seeing what their response is. You know, if someone next door to me's fed it, or I think they fed it very similar to me, they've gone out and not had a bite, and I'm thinking to myself, no, I'll give out another fifteen minutes. You know, mm -hmm. and it's it's all about little decisions like that. That can, um, that can make it, yeah, it. give yeah. you an edge. Well, Dave, I've had me a couple of fish on that, like I would in the match. I've seen a couple of anglers catch a few fish on the pole. I'm going to get out and see if my pole line's um, let's let, let's hope ready for action. Repeats itself again there. Hopefully. Let's move that out of the way. So bait-wise, on the day, really, the best bait for me on the day was just a small head of worm like that. Yeah. So that was a bit of a, a waste, but I keep them back, obviously. For chopping. For chopping later. Just fill the kieran the pot up. And did you get bites immediately? You know, when you went out, obviously you'd had those couple of fish. I did. I had some roach. I had some roach to start off with, and then, you know, the, it, it was just about matter. Of, you know, it was a, really the, mat, the whole match was just about catching whatever ever was in your peg. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did change me me hook bait a bit. I went from a, a small piece of worm to, you know, maybe half a piece of worm, just to see if there was some bigger fish. But to be honest, I, the bait I put on there, that chuck, was was the bait to be had on the day. There you go, bite straight away then.
got a bit quiet out there on the worm line now, mate. You've been feeding, you've been feeding these other lines for quite some time now. What do you, yeah. What, what, what's your mindset now? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to, what I would do now, be, to be honest with you, Dave, it has gone a bit funny out there. I've been, got some flicking casters at top four here. I'm just going to put half a pot of bait in out there, worms with casters again, and come in on my short line. There's a few fish swirling there. There is, now. I think there's some running roach there, so I'm just fishing my little shallow rig there. Single caster. Did you bury that? No. So just took to it be honest, like Dave, to be honest, like I said before, unless it's absolutely rubbish, I um, burying it really is not an option. It's, you know, it's all yeah. about catching lots of fish. There's a lot of fish swirling there now, Dave. There is some fish there, Dave. There we go. And this is the difference in some of the festivals I fish that can make the difference between you know winning your section and losing your section. The thing is, you can be sitting out for cart when you can put together. Well, you know, fish of that size. Exactly, we must have six now. ounces. Yeah. Of course, they have, they have a festival here later in the year dedicated just for just for silver. Just for yes, silver. Right. There's some cracking ones. Yeah, in, in November, you know, when the when the conditions are cold and that, they're still catching forty to fifty pound of silvers, mm. and you just can't ignore them. There's lots and lots of people that ignore them, but I mean, to me, I, I mean, I've I've won festivals because of this, you know. Cracking session again, Des. Yeah, absolutely lovely day. Proper uh, day's fishing. How is today's fishing compared to, to the match? Very similar, really. Not so many skimmers, but, you know, what I wanted to aim to catch out there, I've caught again today, which was the, the quality tench, which is the... And I think what's been, what's been dramatic as well is just how many silverfish are on there. Yeah, it's incredible. It? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, for a month ago, it wasn't so quite, you know, quite as shallow fishing as that. Yeah. But there was a lot of fish, maybe two to two and a half feet deep. But that, I probably caught fifteen pound of my fish doing that. Yeah. And I think what what today what today's session has shown is just the power of worm and caster. Exactly. Worm out there and caster in yeah. there as well. It's been great. Let's yeah. have a look. Let's have a look what you've yep. caught. It's been a cracking day, mate. Oh, absolutely brilliant, Dave. Brilliant day. As you can see from that. Oh. Proper day's fishing. A few pound in there, aren't there? Probably fifty pound over the fault. Excellent. A few hours. Brilliant. Let's get him back. Everyone's a swimmer. Hold well on, mate. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Cheers, Dave. Oh, what another fantastic session day two has been. What have we learnt from it? Well, I've learnt that you can't put all your eggs in one basket on this sort of fishing. Worm was definitely the bait to pick out the better tench, but the way he's been catching these roach and rudd, it's so quick you just can't ignore them. So it's a case of think about your five hours, use it, keep feeding your swims, keep feeding your lines, and that's the way to get the best weights, and that's why he wins so much here. Um, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow now. I'll be here for uh, another session with Steve Saunders, so uh, I'm looking forward to that, and I'll see you then.